I look at the S&P 500. Why are these trade setups? So what these lines, these lines automatically come up. These lines automatically plot for you. And what they are, they're called fresh, I call them fresh supply demand lines. And what fresh supply demand lines means is that it's actually looking at the accumulation distribution as the market moves along during the trading day or, the, or yesterday or the previous day. Where was there a pause in the market? Let's say the market's in a hard uptrend. Let me show you an example why this stuff works. We're in a downtrend right now, but let's say we're in a downtrend right here. And then the market goes sideways and pauses. This is how supply demand lines are generated. That pause right there is accumulation distribution, and then it continues. What we're looking for, these lines are drawn based upon this. We're looking for a pause in the market to show us where there's been accumulation distribution in the past. Because we know that banks, hedge funds, prop firms, all these high frequency algorithms, they can't do all their accumulation distribution with in this vertical movement. You can't get long or shorter position if you're a, a big algo or, or a bank or what have you. You can't get long or short if you're going vertical. You cannot do it. It's impossible because of supply demand. So you have to somehow get short along the market in consolidation phases. And this is where these lines will print. They will show me on two levels. I'll go 30 days back to find the big levels. And then I'll go a couple days back. I go maximum three days back to find these levels that just printed right here. It went maximum three days back. So I know that these levels that printed are a pause in the market in the past to show me that these are levels of resistance. So. Here's how we do it. A simple level is, is the first and second test that you want to trade this level off of. So a very simple way is we look for ABC shorts. If these lines are drawn automatically, we're in a downtrend. You look for a break. You look for a retest. Should come within a tick or so. Minimum two ticks. I don't want it to close a whole body close above this line or invalidate dates of trade. One candle is okay, but no more than one candle. And typically it should just stop right on it within one tick one or two ticks. That's an ABC short. That's a first test. And it comes down. You can see it straddle, straddle, straddle. We don't close and we close blow it again. It cuts through my demand line. Remember, we're looking to short. We're looking for demand to break to become supply. Old demand becomes new supply lines. I'm looking for a retest. And there's your short again on the S&P. Now, on these, I want a full retracement on these still, guys and gals. So I want a full retracement on my oscillator below. That's a full retracement on the retracement. Break retest. Here's a full retracement down below right here. I want a full retracement. Even though I'm using a shorter term line here, I want a full retracement. Okay, there's your full retracement below. Your entry will be a negative market delta or just a red reversal bar. Because I got a trend filter built into the Rinkos already anyway. All right. Then here we come up for the second test. This is a no trade. Do not get in full retracements like this. Here's your full retracement. The key to these supply demand lines is I don't want you to try to get in a trade where you're too far away. See how this is too far away? That's a no trade for me. Don't get involved in the middle of these supply demand lines. This is where you get a lot of stop outs. It comes up and retests on the second test. It's a full retracement. That's tradable. I don't want to look at these levels on the third test. This is a no trade. First and second test for M tops or W bottoms are okay, but these, this is a no trade. This is a no trade. Why? It already tested on a, on a fresh line. It already broke retested, right? Break retest, first test, break retest. This is the first break retest. Break retest. All right, so that's how we do supply demand. Now, the larger time frames, I mean, my 30-minute chart, it's very simple. These are big trade setups right here, especially this is my, my lar larger moving average, my light blue, I mean, a dark blue. This is a big inflection point in the S&P this morning that happened at 6.45 uh, this morning. Look how we broke through, we cut through 
my larger time frame, supply demand, we retested it, it straddled it. This is a huge sell setup on the S&P right there on my 30 days back, my nine Simrico right there. Once again, you come up, another big level right here. Came within one tick of it, another big level. Broke through, retested. So you can trade out the larger time frames too. Came with a couple ticks. You got to come with a couple ticks of them. So you can see on the larger time frame right here, congestion. Now this is what I'm talking about. What I want to see is I want to see confluence between this 30 days back on all these supply demand lines, the supply line, because at this level right here was what? 28.2375. This goes 30 days back and finds all the supply demand. So this is a supply line. Remember, old demand becomes new supply. So 28.2375, well, that set this trade up right here because this is 28.23. So I have my larger time frame at 28.75 right here. My larger time frame and my new supply fresh lines are stacked. So that's a stacked area. So when I break retest, for my smaller time frame entry, you're set up really good because you just broke out, broke down out of a larger time frame break with smaller time frame entry. It happens like this over and over and over and over again. I saw it caught some big trades yesterday. So that is how you can use both together. What I like to do is I like to look for the first or second test of that level, especially on the fresh lines. It's tested these levels several times here at 16, only once at 23, so this level's off. I don't want to screw with uh, this, this level right here. It's already played itself. I don't, I don't want to play at this level, right? It's already tested once right there, twice right there. So I don't want to play with this level no more, but I do want to participate in this level. I want to participate right now in here, fresh. I want to participate in here, fresh. Since I know that's resistance, if the market ever turns, I want to participate here because of the rejection. But I do not want to participate here any longer because we had our trade set up, right? We had our break retest trade already right there. There's our break retest trade here and here and here. So we don't want to take this level no more. It's no longer fresh to me anymore because the more level is hit, it becomes a weaker supply demand line. Remember, these lines are going to print for you automatically. So once they break retest the first time, then stop playing with them. Looking for these new levels. I got a new level at 2023 only tested once. That's a tradable level. 2889 hasn't even tested. That's definitely a traded level. And below here, 2882 is definitely a, trade, a tradable level. Those are tradable levels. That's what I want to get involved in because we already had a nice trade set up this morning already right there. Break retest at a fresh level, 2823 and 2875. That was both time frames met at the same point in time. Right, that's over a 10 point or a 40 tick move in the S&P, right to the exact bar. Even these small ones worked out good. 15 down to 11, that's a 12 point or 12 uh, tick play. So, but now since it's playing, I don't want you to get involved after after the first second test on these fresh lines. I want you to look for the new lines that have printed. Okay. Here, I'll go to the uh, crude oil. Another concept I want you to look at, where it's happening right now in the S&P. So crude oil, this is a fresh supply line that just drew in here this morning at 5 o'clock in the morning. So if you see it got rejected here, which it did, rejection, rejection, it came out at 5, it got rejected here right to almost the tick, I think it was to the tick. 
at 512, and I got rejected at 538. Almost to the, t I think they both stopped to the exact tick on the supply line. So if I look at these highs, the high right there is 50, pretty close. It went a couple ticks of that. So 57, that's 58, the high of this. See, our supply line is 58. Let me just show you how accurate this is. Watch the uh, data box right here. Data box. What's the high in that data box? The high in the data box is what? 58. What's the high in this data box? 58. What's my supply line? 58. It stopped to the exact tick on both of those cell setups this morning. So what does that tell me? Old, old supply becomes new demand. So what I want to do is, is I want to know, I know that if I break through here with trend up and I rotate, rotate back down, that's a buy setup. We got a possible buy setup as we are talking on crude right now, right? So that is far as supply and demand. Now, how can you do it with, let's say, if you got market profile over here? <clears throat> let's say market profile is running interference because we're right in HVA. HVA is right here at 70, what, 72. The thing about market profile is it's very accurate because it looks at all the volume coming in the market, the thick red, thick blue, thick green, thin green, thin red. So we got to get through this level for the S&P to break out. So that tells me one thing. If, if I know that this level is a very big level and I'm at a critical level right here in market profile, if I ever break back inside these levels, I can do the same thing because I got resistance right here. If I ever break back inside ever today and retest that 58, it should be a retest short all the way down the control point or low value area too. So market profile can assist you if, if you have any type of support and resistance outside of what we're doing with the supply demand lines. It give you great confluence. Okay. But the one thing I want you to recognize is rejected support and resistance. This is a great level to trade off of because that is a rejected level. And rejected levels, we had a big trade yesterday right there because what happened was this new supply demand line that formed yesterday at 8 o'clock in the morning, it stopped the market right to the exact M top right here, exceeded by one tick, hit right on it. So what did that cause? That causes this demand line right here. Look at the demand. Look at the demand, and she gets pumped up. So look for the rejected areas off these new supply and demand lines. That creates opportunity on the other side of the market. It's a really neat concept. I'll show you. Gerald, go to the S&P real quick. S&P is the same way. So our big trade on the S&P was here. So watch, I sent this out to you yesterday. You see the new, the new demand, uh, supply line came out at 2 o'clock yesterday, right here, 2 o'clock. So what that did, the new supply line, it created what? Supply. So the market came up on the S&P and stopped right on it, and it got drilled. But what I want you to do is if it got – if, if that reacted off that level, we'd know that's a fresh supply line that reacted. That old supply becomes what? Old supply becomes new demand. Look how it stops right to within one tick. Actually exceeds it only by one tick on symmetry dots and my demand line. And the market explodes for 56 ticks right to the next demand line or supply line as a 56 tick move based upon a rejected level, right? This is very similar to what's going on with crude oil right now. It's the same type of setup looking setup, right? Because look at crude oil. Crude oil's got the same exact looking setup. Let me bring crude over so you can see it. It's getting rejected right now at that level, just like it got rejected in the S&P here yesterday. So what we're going to do is look for a rotation explosion up.
And if that level doesn't hold, it breaks back inside because we're at resistance on the high value area, then fine. We'll take it in the other direction. But that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get support and resistance, we're trying to trade off supply and demand. 